Uh, hi, everyone. Thank you for coming today. Hope you're enjoying the show. My name is John Dunn. Uh, I work with uh, AWR Group at uh, National Instruments, makers of Microwave Office. What I want to talk to you about today is an exciting new feature that we have in our new release of the software, uh, which is uh, coming out uh, very soon, I'd say by the end of the summer. And it's for antenna designers. And uh, as you know, uh, and I assume most of you here are antenna designers of some type if you're listening to this talk, as you know, uh, electromagnetic simulation, of course, is used for antenna design. Many of you are working in technologies where the antenna has multiple feeds. Of course, phased array type applications. Uh, you could have things like stacked radiators with different polarizations, two different feeds or more. Typically, maybe you're using these for communication type systems. You need to steer the beam. You need to control the beam somehow. And the way you're doing that is, of course, uh, changing the phase and amplitude of the signals going into the various feeds. Okay, fine. So you, so you do that. The problem is, is that there's a circuit that's feeding the antenna. And so what we have going on here is you have to, um, well, basically the antenna is affecting the circuit, the circuit is affecting the antenna. And in a nutshell, the 30,000 foot summary, uh, what we have in the new version of the software with this new feature is they can talk to each other, the antenna and the circuit, and we can account for that interaction. So let's get into the details of it and see how it works. First of all, of course, the antenna pattern changes with feed amplitude and phasing at the ports. Usually what's driving the antenna is a highly nonlinear circuit like a power amplifier. And guess what? The port impedance of the antenna at the various ports is changing with the beam. Different port impedance, you just affected the power amplifier performance. And you really have to have these coupled uh, together. Furthermore, the antenna elements uh, interact with each other. Um, you can even get things like scan blindness. Those of you in antennas know these, these disastrous effects, degradations. And the coupling between the elements affects the feed network again. So we have a situation here again where you really need to simulate the whole array combined with the whole uh, circuit. The feed network itself, it's critical that you simulate it. Uh, you can get uh, even resonances built up in the feed network by the loading of the ports, etc. So let me show you um, how this works uh, here with this example, uh, and hopefully give you an idea how we do it. Now, before I do that, one thing a lot of people don't appreciate on the power amplifier end of things is that's a nonlinear simulation. So when you're looking at this interaction, you want to include DC and higher harmonics. So the input impedance of your antennas at higher harmonics could not be what you want and could actually adversely affect your power amplifier and your feed network. Okay, the example we're going to look at here, which of course was done in Microwave Office version 12, is a simple uh, patch array, microstrip array. It's four by four. See it there on the upper left. I'm attaching a feed network to it made out of microwave office components. Uh, this is a passive feed network using Wilkinson dividers. And then at each uh, element, we go ahead and put in a phase shifter and attenuator so we can control the beam, the feed. Um, if you continue, and, and then we have a, a source port on it in the middle picture. It's a little hard to see there. If you continue with the philosophy, then you attach an amplifier at the lower right. That is a power amplifier. This particular one is a mimic power amp. Okay, what do you have to do in the past? So what you traditionally have to do is, guess what? You gotta run the EM and you simulate over on the left. And we end up with a 16 port S parameter file uh, and we're ready to roll. Then what you have to do is you take the S parameter file and you have to excite, uh, you have to excite all the ports and you're looking at the beam 
And typically this is done in some kind of uh, 3D annotation and you see the beam and you're moving your little sliders with all the ports and the beam is moving around, okay? Then what you have to do is you have to take those port impedances, you have to run over the schematic, load them in, re-simulate the power amp, see what it is, and you keep iterating through this procedure and it is really a pain. It's error prone, uh, you're getting frustrated, uh, things are going downhill rapidly and you're not happy. Well, what we've done is automated that process for you here. So let's start with the new way of doing things. No, number one is you, uh, of course, have to simulate the antenna array and electromagnetic simulator. We, we haven't figured out how to avoid that. Uh, we can use Axiom for planar arrays, our planar solver, Analyst for 3D arrays. There's an example on the right here of a simple little uh, seven horn uh, type, monopole type array in, in, used in Analyst. The previous patch example was Axiom, if you can run it in a planar simulator. So we get those S parameters, nothing different there. And now what we do, and this is a blow up of that schematic you saw before, the S parameter file is attached directly to the feed network and the power amplifier. And if we look at this figure, uh, you can see here uh, each antenna element is being driven uh, by, uh, in, as you plow down into these subcircuits, is being driven by a uh, phase shifter and an attenuator. Over here on the right in this example, I have a source port. Now, in reality, that could be a power amplifier where you'd be running harmonic balance. Uh, I haven't bothered to do it for this example for clarity. So imagine in your world, that's your power amplifier. And uh, we're ready to roll. And after you've simulated the EM, the way you set it up, the magic, the secret sauce, if you're familiar with Microwave Office, is we do it as um, uh, measurements and annotations like we normally would. And the secret you can see here is you have to tell the antenna uh, what schematic has the driving circuit. That's what that circled box is. I'm telling that antenna pattern, this circuit is driving it. So please look at the power coming into your ports from that circuit, which could be power amplifier, harmonic balance, etc. Of course, as you then scan, and we're going to see a scan of this in a minute, I scan the phase of the power coming in, the harmonic balance is rerunning because the input impedance of the ports is changing the power amplifier performance. So however long that harmonic balance takes to simulate then, you'll get the update. You're not running the EM, because the EM just does the S parameters. You got it once, that's done. But you would, it would re-simulate the harmonic balance. So a few seconds to several minutes, depending on how complicated your amplifier is, right? Um, again, these measurements, the, the key here is the big uh, takeaway message on setting this up is you tell the various measurements which schematic to use that has the power amplifier. And that's what this is doing. Here's a 2D pattern, uh, same idea, and we have several of these measurements. Now, in that feed network I showed you as you, as you plow into it, what we did for this example is I have a phase shifter going into each element and an attenuator. Of course, we have various parameters controlling those. And what I can do then is change the parameters, which is uh, changing the amplitude going into each element and the phase. And here are the results. So we simulate the EM once, and then as I slide the tuners, you can see I'm moving the beam because the person who set the feed network up, network up uh, is adjusting the phase and attenuation uh, to each element. And behind this with the power is the power amp, which is then being recalculated with the driving impedances so uh, you get the correct performance. If you can tune, you can optimize. 
Anything in our software with a tuner, we can optimize. So can we optimize a pattern? Sure. And in this simple example, um, I started with the uh, purple pattern is broadside excitation here, the antenna pattern. And the person uh, working the, uh, with this is go ahead and tuning the attenuation and the phasing between the elements to get the pattern they want, including the effects of the power amplifier. Uh, so they make sure it's all correct uh, when they're done. <clears throat> so in conclusion, the big thing is when you're making antennas with multiple feed points, so phased arrays, a lot of these communication systems, you've got to account for the interaction between the circuit, typically highly nonlinear power amplifier, and a feed network, and the antenna. The beam is steered by the circuitry. So we got to have that in there. And as the beam changes, the input impedance, the, the input characteristics of the antenna change, which affect the circuit. And they're together, and you have to include them both. So if you're interested in this stuff, uh, kind of thing you do, please drop by the booth. We're demoing this and some other examples of this technology, and we'd be happy uh, to get into more details. So with that, I'll conclude. Uh, thanks a lot, everyone, and have a great rest of the show. Thank you.